Hey, hey, Blue Table fans, Sean here. I am recording this video on my laptop screen capture program. So the audio is probably not going to be that great, but the content is going to be awesome because, of course, it's me. And this video is dedicated to William W., who is working uh, on a Navy ship in South America on uh, apparently some kind of humanitarian thing. And your friend Amanda contacted me and asked me to uh, give you a shout out. So I hope you guys are doing great. And, uh, you know, just uh, a little a little taste of home. So thanks, thanks for all you do. Now let's talk about uh, the new Codex Adeptus Mechanicus books, Katari. And uh, hopefully this will be just one part of a whole bunch of Adeptus Mechanicus stuff. I spent um, a good part of the last few days looking this book over, and at first I was prepared to be not very impressed, but uh, these guys are these guys are amazing. I predict this will be this will be a uh, definitely a contender in the 40k universe because the more I looked at these guys, man, the better the better they just shaped up. Uh, yet I just kept finding things that were awesome about them, about the background, about the models themselves, about, I mean, stuff has cool names, which is important to me, and, and uh, in terms of game mechanics, I mean, they're great. So these guys take a licking and keep on ticking, let me tell you. So first off, one thing that I didn't notice is that in these supplemental books, the force organization chart is sometimes different. So, for example, in Harlequins, and by the way, still loving Harlequins. Those are definitely proceeding apace. The force org for a pure Harlequins force is really bizarre and, and very demanding, too. It demands six compulsory slots. You have to have three troops choices, two fast attack, and, and that's only Skyweavers. So you're talking, let's see, 100, 200, uh, 300, 400, 500, six, yeah, at least 600 points in, in the minimum detachment. So it's, it's pretty big. So three troops, two fast attack, one heavy. And, and then you can have four elite, excuse me, seven elites. And that's a lot. So, but the characters are elites. And I also found out that with running that force org, yeah, I'm getting to the Skitari. Don't worry, I'm just making a point here. You get uh, command benefits, so and they're good. So if you take all Harlequins, you get Rising Crescendo, which is uh, all models with fleet can run and charge in the same turn. That's fantastic. Still haven't found where it says jet bikes can't run, but I could be wrong. Because all it, according to the rules, all models have it by default. So. All right, so now the Skitari Force Org, which is where I'm going to start on this rather long video, is really bizarre. Uh, you have compulsory two troops, that's it. And then you can have four elites, two fast attack, four heavy support, awesome, and then six more troops, and of course a fortification. And now the command benefits is you get uh, Crux Mechanicus and... Uh, which I guess if you translate it, it would be like crossing the mechanics or something. But it's it's where it's where a it's a term meaning when a Skitari, which is effectively a human as far as I can tell, uh, becomes more machine than man. And so it's a guy. They just have so many. I, I'm not even gonna talk about the background of these guys. They're really cool. Tireless advance. All models from this detachment have Crusader and Scout. So that means they get to make a they get to make a six inch move after deployment is done, and that that's pretty awesome. Now some units can take a twelve inch move, but that's not any from this book. And uh, but they can't outflank as a result of scout. So guys, it's pretty cool. Oh, also before I get going. 
on the units and the weapons. Oh my gosh, I have so much to say about this book. It's uh, definitely going to... I wasn't that excited. I was like, you know what, I'll just leave that to the Imperial players. But these guys are so cool. The models are so awesome. Uh, there's a great quote in here. The universe is not like a puzzle box that you can take apart and put back together again and solve its secrets. It is a shifting, uncertain thing which changes as you consider it, which is changed by the very act of observation. A powerful man is not a man who dissects the universe like a puzzle box, examining it piece by piece and measuring each piece with scientific precision. A powerful man has only to look upon the universe to change it. Awesome. Little uh, quantum mechanics, you know, that thing uh, going on in there. Okay, so let's talk about the entries and the models. So your first thing is uh, Skatari. There's a Skatari box that makes Vanguard or Rangers. And uh, let me see if I can find the... There it is, Skatari Rangers. So this box makes both. You get 10 guys in it, 39, so pretty standard. You know, the old boxes had 10 and were $30, so... Uh, but, you know, Games Workshop has upped its game. and So uh, these guys have pretty much a guardsman's stat line, except their ballistic skill is one higher. So they do smack of, uh, what are they called, veterans, guard veterans, and their leadership is, is one higher, too. And uh, they cost um, just under 10 points. And uh, let's look at what they have. They got a four up save. They get as standard, they get a radium carbine. Now, by the way, I'm talking about the Vanguard here. So, um, but this kit makes both. All right. Uh oh, what am I doing? I've got my book sitting on my keyboard and it's doing weird things. I don't like that. There we go. Let's, uh, oh, this is that thing. I hate this little magnifying glass. Like, dude, just give me a big picture and let me admire him. My eyeballs are faster than this. All right. So they get a radium carbine. And let me tell you what this does. Uh, the radium carbine is 18-inch range, strength 3, AP 5, assault 3. So that's very similar to the Swooping Hawk Laz Blaster. In fact, I think it's the same thing. So we found out that it was the same uh, killing power as a Storm Bolter. And, uh, but they also have the rad poisoning, or radiation poisoning, I guess. And so when you roll uh, to wound of six, it causes two wounds. And the game fluff there is that the radiation poisoning, you know, kills guys off, like, after the first guys die. So, and the two wounds are saved against separately. That's, a, that's an important point. So you can actually kill two guys with that. And... Okay, so, uh, so far pretty good. I mean, they're pretty good for, for their points cost just with that. But they also have Feel No Pain on a 6-up. They've got Relentless. Now, Relentless, in fact, just so I don't mess this up, I'm going to look up Relentless in the main rule book. And, yeah, this is going to be like a half-hour video. Incidentally, we are setting up new projects this week. So this is a good week for that. I am uh, monitoring very closely. And uh, let's see here. 70. Here it comes. Uh, they can move and shoot with heavy salvo or ordnance weapons. And they are allowed to cha charge in the same turn that they fire heavy ordnance, rap, rapid fire, or salvo weapons. So the second list for charging includes rapid fire weapons. But the thing is, I started looking at their weapons, I'm like, well, what do they have that even isn't, you know, that's that's a problem, because their basic weapon is Assault 3, so the Relentless doesn't really help them there. And um, But let's look at their options. Uh, let's see. Uh, their weapon options. So let's see, Vanguard Alpha can take uh, ranged melee, special issue war gear, and relics of Mars, so that's pretty awesome. I'm not going to talk about that, that could have some permutations. And uh, they can take, uh, okay, so here it is. 
So two models in the unit can take a special weapon. And if there's ten guys, you can take a third one. But to my mind, I'm like, well, why wouldn't you just make two units of five and then take two weapons in each one? Well, to each his own. So let's look at the special weapons. There are three of them, the Arc Rifle, Transaranic Archibus, and Plasma Caliber. And they all cost, uh, you know, between 15 and 30 points per thing. The cheapest one is the Arc Rifle. And let me tell you what that does. So arc means it's like the, uh, the Tesla weapons from Warehouse 13. That's what those are, arc weapons. So the arc rifle is rapid fire, so that does matter then. And it's strength 6 AP5. Fant oh, man, fantastic. Bring that on. And it's haywire. So that's, guys, this is just death for vehicles, man. Uh, like if you had if you had two units of these guys with four weapons, it's just that's just incredible. You could really you could really demech pretty quick, and that's 24 inch range, so pretty cool. Uh, let's see what's the other ones. Hold on, I can do this. Special weapons, yeah, arc rifle, transoranic archivus. Hold on. See if I can even find that. Oh my gosh, I spent so much time reading this and I can't find it. There it is. This one's really weird. It's like this big, like, you know, Jezail type thing. Although they actually do have a thing called a radium Jezail. Now the Archibus is 60 inches. Uh, Armor Bane, Sniper, AP3. So guys, not too bad. So Armor Bane has a thing. Hold on. I just need to I just need to look that up. I'm pretty sure it's against vehicles that Armor Bane helps. Hold on. I'm working on it. I'm getting there. Armor Bane. Uh, if a model makes a shooting attack with this special rule, it rolls an additional D6 for armor penetration. Has no effect on non-vehicle models. Well, that's weird. Because the strength is X, how does Armor Bane help? Wait, well, oh, it, it would be three. It would be two uh, D six would be the AP. The yeah. So I, I actually don't think that's that good. Uh, sniper. You know I'm not going to read all the rules. Here it comes. Because I got to get through this. I'm already I'm already 13 minutes in and not making that much headway. So then the last one, uh, and this is the one that I just, I think it's just going to rock the game, is the Plasma Caliber. And this thing is, so, yeah, oh my gosh, it's 18 inches, it's a plasma weapon, so Strength 7 AP2, and it uh, gets hot, but it's Assault 3, and that's, that's huge. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Three shots. Now, uh, it's, if you think about it, if you've got a unit of five of these guys and there's two plasma calibers shooting, uh, that means you're going to be rolling six. So six dice. So you've got a pretty much guaranteed chance you're going to get hot in there. And But if you think about it, with ballistic skill four, it's going to be four hits. So you can just take stuff down. Doesn't matter. But they're expensive. It's the most expensive one on the list. And, okay, so now the the Vanguard, that's like the sergeant, he can take two things. One is an enhanced data tether. And that means when the unit you, is under the effect of one of the doctrines, and I'll explain that in a minute, they get plus one. They get plus one to their leadership. So a nice little bonus. And uh, it doesn't cost that much. And... The other, but you know, I, I actually wouldn't get that. I would get uh, the uh, broad spectrum data tether, which is on vehicles and gives the ability to anybody within six inches. So I don't know, depends. Uh, the omnis specs, okay, here's oh, this is awesome. I mean, this is where these guys rock because they just they just they just keep getting cool stuff. I mean, it's crazy. What am I doing? There we go. They just, yeah, 
it takes away one point of cover from units that they shoot at. So kind of expensive, but geez, that is, that is amazing. And uh, okay, so guys, that's the Vanguard. So that's your stock troops. Okay, the Skatari Rangers, these guys cost two points more per model. And they have the exact same thing that the Vanguard have, except they also have move through cover. And uh, what else? Nope, that's basically it. Two points extra, and they get moved through cover. So not, not too bad. Not too bad. Frankly, I would just take the Vanguard. Because you, you don't really want to charge with these guys. And you're, because 40K is becoming kind of a mid-range game, you should be doing just fine uh, with, you know, whatever. All right, let's move on. Now you got your next kit. See if I can find this down here. Uh, nope, that's not it. Let's do a search up here. Uh, it's the Rust Stalkers. Let's see what I find here. There we go. Rust Stalkers. Now these guys are on 40 millimeter bases, so these are definitely elites. And uh, their pricing is pretty hefty. They're still less than a Terminator. And the models are just like so detailed. I just love how handsome these models are. So here's, because in this in this book they they really went off the beaten track with stuff. Because usually things with high wounds, other than heroes, they get like they get like better toughness as their wounds go up, right? But these guys have two wounds, and they're and they're strength four, so awesome. And uh, so they've got a four up save. And they get they get three things for their weapons, and they're all awesome. So here it comes they get a transonic razor. Now transonic weapons are kind of like a weapon version of a Borg force field. They adapt to whatever defenses they're coming up against. So they are um, a transonic razor basically gets. Uh, or any weapon that's transonic gets a uh, where any to wound roll of six automatically wounds regardless of target toughness, and that that's not good because with strength four, unless you're fighting like a wraith lord or something, it doesn't. You just have a six anyway, at worst, right? So it's not that great. Oh, except after. Uh, hold on. Oh, excuse me. In the first round of combat, a to wound roll of six is AP two. So yeah, that is a big deal. And all subsequent rounds, all wounds are AP two. Amazing. Amazing. So it's a weapon that's like, because normally things are like lances in Warhammer Fantasy. They get something good on the first turn and then they go to normal. But these guys, if they just last a turn, and it speaks to kind of how this army is. I think it's 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 a very durable army. And so they have that. And they also have a cord claw, which is the same as the razor, except it also has molecular dissonance. And that means one of the guy's attacks uh, has flesh bane. That's basically it. So you'd roll one attack for each guy separately. So if you charged in with five, you'd be rolling five dice as the cord claw molecular dissonance attack. And flesh main means you wound on a two up. So that's actually really good for, you know, against monstrous creatures and stuff. Yeah, and these guys have pretty good initiative at a four. I mean, they're they're pretty elite, but they cost oh man, they cost they're uh, thirty points a thirty points a model. And uh, so their third weapon, what's their third weapon, ask you? It's uh, Mind Scrambler Grenades. So these allow them to charge into cover, no initiative penalty, basically. And hold on, I'm trying to find these grenades. And they're like, they can hay, they're like haywire grenades too. Yep, yeah, in Assault they have haywire. So awesome. And you can... You can, uh, you can also throw them. So, all right, let's keep moving. 
Uh, let's see. Now, you can, if you want, you can uh, switch out the cord claw, which is like this claw-like thing, and have them have two transonic blades. So that would give them, I, I'm not sure, but I think that would give them an extra attack, whereas normally they wouldn't have it because they have two weird things. So their base attacks are two, and the leader gets three. So, you know, three attacks plus one, four on the charge. Pretty awesome. Uh, now that the sergeant, the princeps, can take a data spike, prehensile data spike. And let's see here. That is uh, Haywire. And at initiative 10. So pretty awesome. Not too bad. All right, so those guys are pretty cool. They are pretty spendy, though, for toughness three. Granted, they have two wounds, but, boy, it would be easy to double them out. But they do get regular feel no pain and furious charge. Oh, crap. So there's strength five on the charge. Yeah, these guys, these guys are pretty fearsome. Pretty fearsome. All right, let's move on. Then there's Sicarian Infiltrators, and these guys have like this weird sort of, uh, uh, like they put out like this hum, humming sound, and it, it blinds and deafens the enemy within a certain range. And here's where these guys have some really good like synergy, where one unit can help another unit. Um, so first off, wait, do the other guys have Dune Strider? Oh my gosh, all right, I forgot to say, the Rust Stalkers and these other guys have Dune Strider, which is basically plus three movement at all times. And that's, oh man, oh, it just, it just never ends. They just keep getting so many amazing things. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Hold on, I'm trying to find the rule for Dune Strider here. Just so I'm telling it to you, right? Dune Strider. Okay, where do I find it? They've consolidated things pretty well. Um, all right, we're at 22 minutes. We're doing pretty good. Ranged weapons. Oh, here it is. Three inches to the movement phase when it runs and when it makes charge moves. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, man. That's so awesome. That is just... That's just amazeballs. So the infiltrators cost uh, a little bit more than their, uh, about five points more of than the rust stalkers. So they get, uh, let's see, stub carbine and power sword. Uh, they also have, they have feel no pain like their other guys. They have infiltrate and stealth. Now, neurostatic aura, their last special rule, all enemy models within six inches subtract one from weapon skill, ballistic skill. Excuse me. All enemy models within six inches of one. Yep, that's right. So it's by model, not by. It won't affect a whole unit. That's a big deal. They subtract one from weapon skill, ballistic skill, initiative, and leadership. Amazing. It's not cumulative, though. Yeah, that was the first thing. How many of you thought that immediately? Is that cumulative? Could I have like 10 of these and drop everybody to zero. All right, so uh, and they, they can take some of the weird weapons. It's nothing really uh, that unusual. Uh, but power swords are pretty cool. and uh, But they do not get furious charge like their brothers on the other side. Hold on. So it's a tough call. I, 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 don't know, I don't know which I would take. I really don't know which I would take. Quite frankly, I don't think infiltrates help them that much. Uh, let's see. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Now, the next one, oh my gosh, these models are so cool. But do remember, the Force Org on this only gives you two fast attack. Let's see if I find anything here. Fire Dragons. Dragoon. Try it again. There she blows. So, the, and these guys are pretty huge, looks like to me. It's a pretty beefy model. And, okay, yeah, I, sorry, I can't center this, guys. All right, so you've got the Sidonian Dragoons, and those are the close combat version of this. That's what you're looking at here. Um, 
and then you've got the Iron Strider Balistari, and they're both right around 50 points. And um, so these got their 11 all around, two hole points. They have three attacks, though, the Dragoons do. That's awesome. That is really good for a walker. Not the best, but pretty good. Strength five uh, is, you know, is, uh, is pretty good, too. So they got a searchlight. They have a broad spectrum data tether, uh, just no extra cost. That's units within six get plus one to leadership when they're under the influence of a, do a doctrine, which I'll explain at the end. Oh, the doctrines are they just these guys just keep getting better and better. It's crazy. The doctrines are what's going to make these guys just through the roof. Because do you remember, do you remember like the faith points for Sisters of Battle, where it was like, uh, now we got to do things for them and they're limited quantity and da 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 da. Well, these things you just get the cards, you just play one at the beginning of every turn or whatever it is. So not not too shabby. Oh, it's this magnifying glass again. I hate that. Okay, go away now. All right, so they get Crusader. I don't remember what that does. It's not that awesome. Uh, they have Dune Strider. That's a huge deal. So they move nine. They charge 2d6 plus three. They run 1d6 plus three. It's awesome. These guys have Incense Cloud, which gives them a five-up cover save. And uh, so, and they, but they can be up to squads of six. So let's talk about their weapon, the Taser Lance, which looks really cool. It's all very steampunk for these guys. The Taser Lance is really a very bizarre creature. Um, oh my gosh, it has uh, plus three strength on the charge, plus two strength all other times. So they'll get strength eight and send strength seven just from having the Taser Lance. And uh, it has Joust, which doubles their initiative on the turn that they charge. So that's pretty awesome. What is their initiative, anyway? Guys, so these guys can just... I love it when anything can just blow something up the turn that it hits it. You know? So their initiative would be uh, 6. So 3 times 2 is 6. All right, but that's not what the Taser weapon does. Taser uh, is when you roll a to-hit roll... Uh, so that's different than the arc weapons. Arc weapons are, um, not arc weapons, what was I doing? Radium weapons. Hold on, I can do this. Uh, is to wound of a six causes two wounds. And a taser is a roll of six causes two additional hits on the target. So that's, that's actually pretty good. Because on the charge, they're going to get four attacks. So there's bound to be some sixes in there. So not too bad. Not too bad. You could end up with a goodly amount of hits. A roll of six in there instead of, you know, three hits. You got five hits. And uh, strength eight ain't bad, guys. So what? who are these good against? Not regular armored folks because they have no AP. You know, vehicles, I guess. So Or they can get rid of the taser lance and they can get a radium jazzale. Oh, man crazy and that's free by the way a radium jazz ale is so much fun uh they got 30 inch range they're sniper weapons heavy too um so uh but th these guys will be able to move and shoot those ap5 and rad poisoning which is to wound roll of six causes two wounds for the radiation poisoning that the other guys get so that's the dragoon i don't know i gotta tell you it's a tough call. They look really cool, but you got to think who else in this army fills this same role. And of course, that's the Rust Stalkers. Um, so, okay, so let's talk about uh, gun platforms. So, yeah, and I'm not sure because basically this army list kind of has everything to deal with everything. It's really nice, even flyers, as you'll see in a second. So the Balastari. The Iron Strider Balastari. They got those same stats all around, but they, they do only have two attacks. And uh, they have um, what are, they have the standard Imperial weapons. Let's hold on, let me see if I can grab a, 
a uh, iron strider. Hold on, let me do a search. Maybe you can hear me tapping on my keyboard. Weird. All right. So they can have uh, twin-linked auto cannon, twin-linked, uh, or twin-linked las cannon. But those are both cognis weapons, and it means they hit on a five plus. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, they have ballistic skill two when they're firing Overwatch. So with twin-linked, these guys are definite. A uh, unity. These guys are definitely going to peel off two or three attackers and. To my mind, that's like a defensive measure. It keeps them from being charged because uh, they're not—they're not that awesome. They, you know, they've only got weapon skill three. So, um, Doomstar. Oh, but these guys get precision shots. So, to hits of six, can be allocated uh, where you want in the unit. Pretty sure that's how that works. Uh, and nothing else really to say for the Iron Striders. So, quite frankly, I think the Iron Striders are where how you're going to see that kit. Uh, kitted out, but guy, they're cool, and uh, the dragoons are fast, and the iron striders are heavy. Okay, great. So not a lot of competition for those two fast attacks, but all right. There's only one more army list entry in this book, and that's the uh, Onager Dune Crawler. So by the way, an Onager is, as I looked up, is a uh, like a Roman catapult type of thing. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, these guys are weird. They weigh in. They're under 100 points for a vehicle, so that's not bad. They got 12, 12, 11 for armor, so that's pretty good. They're, they're kind of this mid-range walking platform, weapon platform thing. Like, what are they really, with only one attack, they're not there for close combat. You know, I wouldn't get, the, I wouldn't get these guys in close combat. They are... They're, you're not going to do anything there. It's not awesome. They're, yeah, they're definitely gun gunboats. So, um, they're, but they are relatively cheap. Uh, they have a broad spectrum data tether. So between this and the uh, the dragoons, you've got you've got that kind of coverage. But they do have a great defensive measure, which is the Emanatus force field, and that's a six up. Uh, invuln save, or is it a cover save? I can't remember. Hold on, let's check. This is important. Six plus invuln. Awesome. Even better. But that goes up by one for every other model from the same squadron within four inches, at which it would have to be. And you can have up to three. So you get you could get that up to a four up. And I gotta tell you, that smells like the old devil fish thing, you know, whatever they had, disruption pods, good gracious. So, um, Dune Stalkers, the weapons are weird though, they can have four different weapons, the standard one, no extra charge, is the Eradication Beamer, and this is, the, this is a very bizarre creature, it's strength 10 AP1, but only up to 9 inches out. Now, from 9 inches to 18 inches out, it's Strength 8, AP 3, Heavy 1, Blast. It's Heavy 1 in each case. So, Strength 8, AP 3, Blast. And then from 18 inches to 36 inches, it's Strength 6, AP 5, Large Blast. Now, I don't like this thing. It looks cool, but I do not, I do not like it. And here's why. Because it limits, like, your target choices. And early in the game, if anything, hold on, I think the, the Dune Strider, there she goes. Yeah, baby. I'm loving that. Is this pre-order, I wonder? Oh, look at how gorgeous that fig is. Redonkulous. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the something? Twin-linked heavy phosphor blaster. Okay, that's the, that's the next weapon, the Phosphor Blaster, and that costs extra points, not that many, it's kind of mid-range, but quite frankly, I think this one's a loser too. Let me tell you why. Uh, it's 36 inch range, Strength 6 AP, oh no, actually this is pretty awesome, Strength 6 AP3, Heavy 3, Luminogen. Now what does Strength 6 AP3 mean? That means a big screw you to Space Marines. 
because it's wounds on a two up, no saves, goodbye. And heavy three ain't too bad. Oh, guy, these are cool. Oh, I haven't seen the back of them. Look at that. A little power plant going on there. So cool. What? I would... This is, this is what I want to own. Okay, so anyway... Um, Luminogen is... If they suffer... If a unit suffers wounds or penetrating or glancing hits, they count the cover save as one point worse for the turn. So between this and the other thing... Uh, you can basically take away cover saves from this army that really has a lot of good range things. So, not too shabby, guys. Uh, yeah, I'd say that definitely is going to be one of the options you'll see. Uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, this is the Icarus thing. Uh, no, 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 that's not what I wanted. Why are you doing that? Oh, there you go. I'm pretty sure this is your... Uh, yeah, this top one, that's your Eradication Beamer. And that just... It has just such a cool thing on it. I mean, come on. Um, now, the one I think you're going to see the most of is the Neutron Laser and Cognus Heavy Stubborn. I'm pretty sure that's this bottom one here. Okay, the Neutron Laser, uh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty spendy, pretty spendy upgrade. Uh, hold on, I can do this. Neutron Laser. It's uh, 48 inches, strength 10, AP 1, heavy 1, blast. So it's a blast last cannon with plus 1 strength and concussive. And concussive means uh, if you take a wound, you uh, have initiative 1. So that is, guys, i got to tell you, that is yet another way that this, this army synergizes. Because you could, you know, just you could then charge in with another unit. So the Dune Crawler is pretty cool. Last one is the Icarus Array. It's very expensive. I mean, it pushes these guys basically into, like, a regular tank instead of a medium tank in terms of cost. And... Um, the Icarus Array is really bizarre. It's, um, hold on. Let me get to the back again. Okay, so the Icarus Array has three things on it. It has a Gatling rocket launcher. Uh, they're all 48-inch range. It's strength 6, AP 4, heavy 5, ignores cover, and sky fire. Awesome. The twin Icarus autocannon is strength 7, AP 4, Heavy 2, Interceptor, Skyfire, Twin Link. Uh, yeah, these, uh, they're great against Flood. They all have Skyfire. Now, if they use Interceptor, the other two weapons can still fire at other things. That makes these guys really cool. In fact, you may see... Yeah, I don't, e I don't even know what to say about the Dune Crawlers. Because they like... <laughs> they, you're just going to want a lot of them, you know? It's, uh, they're just spoiled for choice, you know, but yeah, they are, they are kind of expensive. You could have, you could have conceivably 12 of them in an army because you get four heavy support slots. Yep, sure enough. And these guys can be up in units of three. So guy, not too bad. And that's, that's a lot of shooting power, man. Yeah, I'd say it's a, it's a tough choice. It's a tough choice. All right, uh, and they can take v uh, uh, vehicle upgrades. Um, oh, they also have the crawler special ability, which means they're never slowed by difficult terrain and automatically pass dangerous terrain tests, but they cannot run. So, okay, pretty cool. You'll probably see that rule in more things. All right, let's talk about the, doc the doctrines, Doctrina Imperialis. So when you play this army, you get six cards at the beginning of the game. And, oh, excuse me, Doctrina Imperatives. And uh, let's see. It's at the start of your movement phase, so beginning of the turn, basically. And so here's how it works. There's uh, three different levels. So at the lowest level, you get plus one ballistic skill. And, and another card gets plus one weapon skill. So it gives the same thing. So uh, one gives plus one ballistic skill, 
or uh, if you play the next card or another card you can get plus two to your ballistic skill but you get minus one weapon skill that's army wide for the turn and then the last one is you get three to your ballistic skill but minus two to your weapon skill and then the other three are the basically the switch of that where you get plus to your weapon skill and minus to your ballistic skill so think about all those plasma calibers think about the dune crawlers and think about it i mean it's almost like a feat in war machine where like that turn every model in your entire army has plus three ballistic skill insane and i wonder if because that'll bring these guys up to like seven ballistic skill and i wonder if that gives them anything any like bonus to hit you know let's see here hold on i'm looking this up in the rule book i should have looked this up before didn't occur to me till now ballistic skill six or better page 33 oh boy see because you never see this so you know what does it matter oh you get to re-roll the ones so so okay so let's look at this they most things in here, if not all of them, have ballistic skill four. Yep, BS4, BS4, BS4. Okay, it's four. So that would bring the whole army up to ballistic skill seven. Crazy. Oh, can you only imagine? So that means if, if you rolled a one, you could retry and hit on a five plus. So just awesome. Uh, yeah, okay, that's the lab. The Warlord trait's pretty good. I'm not going to talk about those right now. Uh, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, they are, this is a great army. And the Force or the, excuse me, the, um, yeah, what are those called? Where you have like special formations, that's what it is. The formations are pretty cool. And, um, they, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, quite frankly, I would almost just get one of every unit and just start up on these guys. Uh, I did a calculation. It's something like, uh, you know, one of every unit. Hold on, let me just do the math in my head. Uh, let's see. 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 8. 100, 900, um, yeah, it's about, depending on how you kit them out, it's between 1,000 and 1,500 if you just take one of each of the, the six units, one, two, three, four, seven units, yep, and GW only made four kits for this army, they made uh, the dune crawler, the big walker guys, and then they uh, made the um, elite infantry, and then the basic infantry, so not too bad. And quite frankly, looking at the stuff you can get with this, it's like a, it's a very playable force. I mean, these guys, to me, these guys sound like fun to play because some of them get outflank. Uh, you've got good range. You've got good midfield. You've got some really great close combat guys. I mean, there's really, there's really nothing lacking here. I mean, some of the weapons are kind of short range on your basic guys, but I mean, you can you can work around that really easy. So yeah, I can't wait to start this up. And um, if you want BTP to magically make your Adeptus Mechanicus army appear, contact us. Uh, you can get a hold of us at projects at bluetablepainting.com. And it's it's good stuff. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. And I, I appreciate every single person that visits our channel and offers their support, whether through goodwill or through actually, um, actually using our services. See you tomorrow.